Well, there are fewer than 7,000 Sumatran and 50,000 Bornean orangutan left in the jungle. Now, Borneo Orangutan Survival Australia is one of the foundations attempting to save, rehabilitate and, importantly, re-release the species back into the wild. Here to talk about their efforts and the animal that shares 97% of our DNA, please welcome BOS President Tony Gilding. Thank you very much. Thank you now, we love our story. Just to set it with our viewers, around 10 years ago, you were a CEO in the marketing world, the top of your game in terms of business. What led you to start working with orangutans? Well, I was lucky enough to travel a fair bit, and I, I dropped into Borneo, and I had a very close encounter with an orangutan. I sat there and I looked into his eyes, mm. and he said, help. Oh. And it was just so, it was such an amazing moment. So, you really really emotional. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. talk about yeah. so, so you came back from that experience. Yeah. Take us through the thought processes and how, what did you do? What did you change in your life? Well, being a CEO, I said, no problem, I'll fix it. So I thought, I'll come back to Australia, I'll fix the problem. Yep. And that was 10 years later and I still haven't fixed the problem, <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of us uh, working on it, uh, volunteers mainly. And uh, for the first time, there's a lot of hope because there's been some really good news over the last couple of weeks and uh, we can see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So okay. the, the good news is, Tony, is that for the first time you've been releasing orangutans back into the wild. That's right. And this has been 20 years in the preparation. Yeah, and of well, course, well. The, the main thing is that you need to find the land. And uh, through the incredibly generous donation of an Australian guy called uh, John Cochran, um, he went to Borneo as well. He had a bit of a close encounter with an orangutan and uh, he donated uh, over half a million dollars. And with that money, wow. we were able to uh, uh, buy 100,000 hectares. There's, there's John there, actually, wow. yeah. And, uh, 100,000 hectares? Yeah. So we've got uh, two, now, two now blocks of land each, 100,000 hectares, and they're protected. We've got people there. They're safe. So we can, it's sort of like we've bought our own national park. Tony, you know? I've had a lot of close encounters with orangutans myself, but that's mainly in the media world. Um, <laughs> the thing I'm impressed about with this is there's two elements. One is getting the land in order to start to provide a habitat for the orangutans, but secondly, training these orangutans so that they can be re-released into the wild. Yeah, and it's such a complex, enormous world. In the wild, uh, an orangutan mother looks after its baby for seven to nine years before mm. it lets it go. They live oh, solitary wow. lives, they don't live in groups. So it's the mum and the baby, and mum just teaches the baby everything they need to know. Where are the fruit, who to avoid, how to avoid oh. things, uh, and they're just drop dead gorgeous, as you can so, see. And, uh, so these ones that you're talking about don't have the mother there? So they don't have a mother. For, for various reasons, normally they've yeah. lost their habitat, they don't have a mother, and so the mother that looks after oh. them... <laughs> Kitty daycare. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. it so, is. so you guys, it's that hard balance, isn't it, between providing that role as the mum, but not being too attached so that they can then be released. Exactly, and that's why you don't see any pictures of us with orangutans. They've got to, they've really got to be scared of people because when we put them back into the jungle, mm. we want them to leave that enclosure and we want them to run across the ground and get up in those trees yeah. and never come down. Yeah. What happens when they are re-released? You've released a couple. What happens? Have you followed them? Yes, yes. They, 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 the tracking exercise is enormous. We've got uh, about 60 trackers in the bush. There are now 21 orangutans being released. Yeah. We've got 60 trackers in the bush. Every morning they go to where the orangutan slept in its nest the previous night and they follow it all day long. Now you can imagine in the steaming hot Borneo jungle when you're trying to get through the undergrowth and the orangutan who's done, been doing this all of his life is 50 feet up in the trees yeah. running across the or swinging between the trees and you've got to keep up with them. It's, it's tough. Well, many of us won't get the experience of going to Borneo and connecting with these incredible animals. Yeah. Can you put it into words? Can you describe what it was like for you? Um, well, when, when the orangutan was actually released, or the, the, I was lucky enough to be there when, the, when a couple of the orangutans were released, and when they're released from the cage, it's, uh, it's, it's just the most amazing feeling that he's back where he should be, or she's back where he should be. Mm. And uh, they, they, they just went straight up the tree, everybody was teared up, there were tears in the jungle. How and, do you avoid forming those attachments though? Like you say, you can't because they need to go back. Yeah, but well how I think it's hard for that? the mums. It's not so hard for me because you know, we're supporting about 825 orangutans that we hope to get back into the into the wild, but for the mums that have spent all of that time with them, it's really like the loss of a son, but yeah. they're, they're happy, you know, they, they the know mums, it's going back. So by the mums you mean human the, mums? The human mums, yeah, yes, because they've got yeah. this, this virtually the same human mum for seven or eight years of their life. Do you feel, Tony, that this is, this is something that when, you know, you hope you're going to live a very long life, but when you are about to go that you'll sit there and go, I made 
my mark on the world? Well, I, I, I certainly can't take credit for the program, but I can... But you've been uh, a massive... But, uh, but, uh, well, we, we've all been a part of it, but what I can say is that, yeah, absolutely. When, when, when life's down and things are tough, I get out my little iPad and I look at the pictures of the orangutans and I smile and it gives me just such a great warm thing. And uh, it's, it, we all know that doing something for other things, especially animals that are so vulnerable and so gorgeous, you know, they laugh, they cry, they, uh, they trick you, they try and avoid the trackers, they, they, some of them have just been popping in blindly behind the camp and just sort of looking down there, and, uh, we're out here guys, you know, and then they go back for, then they lose the trackers and then they come back, so they're, they're really mischievous. And they're, they're such fun. They're, they're, they're great, great little animals. Oh, um, thank you so much. That is just so wonderful to hear that people like you are doing things like that in the world. Thank you very much. Can we all thank Tony? Thank you very much. And you can find out more about the fight to save the orangutan from extinction by checking out Tony's website, orangutans.com.au, or going to the Circle website. Now let's get the final offer of the morning from the Circle and Pat.